I got in the car and then my brother started crying and I was just like, boy, what the hell are you crying for? Okay, y'all, welcome back for part two. We're gonna get back to the business. We gotta get back to getting a little know about me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, who has left the most impact on your life? I would say all of my grandparents, the living and the dead, God rest in peace. Um, because they set the foundation and you know, it makes me work harder to continue their legacy and all that kind of stuff. So I want to like tell that story. Like I want to be that walking story. So like, like, like that's a product of what I started. You know, it's like that's very deep. Like I, this is what I started. And yeah, next question. Do you remember your dreams? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, like my dreams are so detailed to the point that I can tell you exactly like what happened, how it happened, what was said, how it was said, and my feelings in it. Cause I've I've had dreams where I told my brother, like my brother, so what went down was we was it was like a scary movie thing. We was at the Chevron right on 19. If you know where, if you know me, you know where that is. And I ain't talking about um the gas go. We talking about Chevron. If called gas go, we call about the Chevron. But and my daddy went there to pay for the gas, and it was some crazy man or something was going on, and so. He came and shot out the place, so we left. I got in the car, and then my brother started crying, and I was just like, boy, what the hell are you crying for? It's just a dream. So, yeah, I know when it's a dream. I know when I can tell, I can pull apart my dream, and that's the crazy part, because I taught myself how to, I may sound crazy, but it's okay. I taught myself how to talk. I taught myself how to hear. Like, I had, like, this. I had to reach that part and it's like it's crazy that I can do that because I can stop the dream and I can be like I don't want to uh, I'm gonna go and that's it I love my dream do you have a whole lot of acquaintances or just a few very close friends so I would say it took me two years to find close friends here at college and the reason is because I come from a small town and we've all been friends for like 10 years over 10 years and they had to compete the people the friends here had to compete with the friends there and I, it just took me to almost two to three years to find like somebody that like, I can go to and that's my friend Kiki like that's my home girl she hold me down y'all gonna see her sometimes like mm. she hold me down Kendallin hold me down. Angel hold me down. Like, them are girls. Vance hold it down. Like, if I'm going through, I can go to any one of them. Maybe any one of them. But I ain't gonna say which one I ain't going to, but maybe any one of them. I can talk to them about it. I can talk to them about anything. That's, that's the main part. Like, But them people at home... They hold it down, man. My best friend. But shout out. Y'all gonna meet him. His name is Jalen. Very fashionable. Cool person. Like, we just... You saw him, you saw me. That's how high school was. Even now. You see him, you see me. You see me, I see him. We see each other. <laughs> what is your star sign? I'm a Pisces. March 18th. So... I'm a little emotional sometimes, but it's okay. You probably done seen it about 10 times in this video, but it's a no judging zone. You're gonna keep it key and be no judging. We're not gonna judge nobody. We're not gonna down anyone. That's what 
this stuff. We do, then we keep it, keep it, you know, down. Your most used swear word, most used swear word. What the hell? What the hell? That's my favorite word, y'all. Oh, hell. Oh, hell, nah. What the hell? <laughs> what is at the top of your bucket list? I'm trying to go skydiving, y'all. I want to go skydiving because I feel like if I can go skydiving, like, dang, like, I'm, I don't touch the top of the world. So what, what can I be afraid of? What can man hold against me? That's the word right there. What can man hold against me when God created everything? Hello, somebody. What can man hold against? I'm going skydiving. My friends talking about something. I don't want to go. You ain't gonna go. You can just be there. I already didn't want you to jump with me. Have you ever dated? Have you ever dated? I can't even say it. Have you ever dated? Two people at a time. Sad. If anybody want to be a candidate, if anybody want to go through this long, long journey to date, you can. But may the odds be in your favor because it's long and everybody can't even make it past the interview. And I am, dang, you know what, I'm gonna be nice. I can do it, just hit me up. Let me know what you trying to do and we can like meet up, chit chat, talk, shoot your shot. This question just said, when was my first date? <laughs> I'm this difficult and where that my first date was just this summer. And I'm 21. 21 years old and just started a date. I don't know what to say. It's embarrassing. Embarrassing. <laughs> Let's see. Are you a morning morning person or a night person? I would say both. More of a morning person because even though I'm at night, like even though I can go to bed at three o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna wake up at nine. The only reason that I'm up that late is that I went out, I brainstorming, cause this might just be rolling like, oh, I gotta do this, gotta do that, gotta do that, gotta do that. Or I'm up singing and dancing. I'm watching a good show. That's it. Like getting down, getting down, like. This question is not up here, but one question that I do want to say is that, like, what do I love? Like, what always makes me happy? And I would say music, anything art. So, musicals, um, good movies, concerts. Um, good. My favorite movies are um, anything true story, anything Christian. Like, Christian movies, they give me so much inspiration. Like, I mean, there was a God. There's somebody. And if you don't believe that somebody, I'm going to need you to get to know him. Know them. Know them. What drains your energy? One thing that drains my energy the most is negativity. Negativity. Because, you know, negative, like being around somebody negative all the time can cause you a lot. Like it can cause you, it can cause your next blessing. It can cause you your sanity. It can cause your, um, it can cause a lot. Because, you know, you go through, you realize that, dang, I missed a lot because of this person that was in my life and I could have been doing so much. And that look, that look, it, it could just be an ounce of negativity that can hold you back from a lot. And I've experienced that because I, that negative spirit can influence you, influence your goals, influence your aspirations. You'll be like, dang, I don't want to do that no more. Like I'm scared or um, I, I don't think I'm fit for it or I'm just, I feel like I'm going to miss out or like it's just so much that you can, that, that negative energy can do and you just have to push past that. Even if it's, it's like, even you can be your negative 
You can be your own negative. And I feel like I, it's been time, times in my life where I was my own negative and I just had to push. I had to get over it. I, like, I had to like push that aside. Yeah. You won't grow with negativity around. Like negativity is like an earthworm in a garden. Eat up the cabbage. You need positivity, honey. That fertilizer. That 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 put that nutrients in that seed so that seed can grow into something like a plant, a flower, a sunflower. Something that provides nutrients to somebody else because that's what we do in this world. It's a cycle. You get you some positivity, you get you you, you plant you, you get you some sunlight, that's positivity. You get you some fertilizer, that's positivity. You feed yourself, you inhale yourself, you fill your glass. Then you're able to share and provide that nutrients to somebody else. That's a word right there. That's a, that's a word. Like, that's a good one. Woo! Don't y'all pastors be trying to stay my son. Mm -mm. Um, would you rather have to change your clothes five times a day or wear the same outfit five times in a row? So... This question has no limits. So I would say five times in a row because I can switch the outfit out. I can make it into something new. It could be, I could wear the same outfit five times in a row, but it'd be different. Because they didn't say we can switch it up. Like when I was in show choir and all that stuff, like we had to change clothes at least five times in the show, three times. So that means I had on something when I got there. I had to change about three or four times there. And then I had to put on some leave. So like that's a lot of clothes. Like that's you gotta wash all of that over, and that's not good. That's not good for the world. That's not good for the threading of the fabric. It's not good. It's not. Would you rather always be overdressed or always underdressed? This is what I say. I'd rather be overdressed because you know, if you're not looking good, you don't feel good. And when you look good, you feel good. And when you're overdressed, you know you slaying it. You slaying it. Cause they be like. I feel like I'm under drink. Because they say the same thing. They're like, you look good, so. Like, come on, man. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest and 1 being the lowest, rate your fashion sense. I would say I would give myself an 8 or a solid 7 because I feel like I can learn more. Um, and I feel like with this journey that I'm going with this YouTube channel, like I can learn like who do you, who different people are, expand my horizon besides you know the ceiling that I've reached, um, you know backstories and all that, being able to know who like what makes fashion fashion. So I give myself a solid seven and eight because I can grow. And yeah, this is me. I give you a juice of who I am. So, DJ Key, play that beat.